Hey everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to um, defend a conditional argument. So, in a modus, in, when you're writing your paper, um, you'll, and you're getting to the deductive section where you're going to write your modus ponens, the first thing you want to make sure you have is a valid argument in standard form, uh, and that's going to be something like, If it's raining, then it's cloudy. So those are your premises. If it's raining, it's cloudy. It's raining, therefore it's cloudy. Now, um, these can be moved over by pushing the tab button. Put that in the middle. And what you're to do after this is take this first premise, put it here, if you get it out of that, go ahead and bold it. And then underneath this, go ahead and write your defense. When you're, when you're writing a defense of each um, of the premises, you need to make sure you're defending the premise as stated. So here it says, if it is raining, then it is cloudy. And what you need to express there, uh, not only is um, as it's stated, um, but you also need to express the uh, conditions uh, that the conditional statement uh, represents, which are your necessary and sufficient conditions. So what this is claiming is that rain is good enough to guarantee <clears throat> that there will be clouds. All right, rather that there are clouds. So that's something that you're going, that the statement, if it's raining, then it's cloudy, is claiming, is claiming that rain is good enough to guarantee that there are clouds. And um, this is what you need to defend is your sufficient condition. The next thing you need to defend is your necessary condition. That is here is cloudy. So what the necessary condition expresses is that So it's saying that uh, clouds are a requirement for rain, for having rain in clouds. So these are the statements that you want to express, right? So if you want to break this down uh, more, you can break it down into what uh, what statements, right? So this statement right here, if it's raining and it's cloudy, can be translated into two what statements. Um, and that is this one, this claim. Rain is good enough to guarantee that there are clouds. And it's also saying, making this claim, clouds are required for rain. So in order to defend this premise right here, if it's raining, then it's cloudy, what you need to do is explain why uh, number one and number two are true. And remember, to explain why, you need to break down its reasons, the reasons for it, uh, and the evidence for the reason. Now, if you're doing a short paper, you, all you really need to do is explain the reasons for uh, these what claims. So what claims are this? Rain is good enough to guarantee that there'll be clouds? Okay, so if you want it, you could just claim it. Rain is good enough to guarantee that there'll be clouds. Then to defend this, you just need to say why, right? Give me the reasons. Uh, so the reason is that uh, rain is a product clouds when rain occurs um, it is because the water droplets are just too heavy for, uh, to remain in the air um, so they fall this is this this falling of water is called rain. So, um, rain is going to guarantee that there are clouds. All right. So this claim is uh, so. Let's read this. So it says rain is good enough to guarantee that there are clouds. 
And the reason why is because uh, rain is a product of clouds. Right? When, it rain, when rain occurs, it's because the water droplets, um, water droplets uh, that form the clouds become too heavy to remain in the air, so they fall. This falling of water is of water droplets is called rain from clouds is called rain so this is then telling you that rain is going to guarantee cloud uh that there'll be clouds because clouds you know are pretty much the constituted the parts are rain uh so then you can say it um So rain guarantees the presence of clouds. So this is going to be a clear defense of the sufficient. This should be a, 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 a set of reasons for the sufficient condition, which would constitute a defense. So rain is good enough to guarantee that, that there are clouds. Clouds are a product of rain. When rain occurs, uh, it is because the water droplets that form the cloud become too heavy to remain in the air, so they fall. This fall in water droplets from the clouds is called rain because rain is a product clouds there cannot be rain without clouds so rain guarantees the presence of clouds now we can start on the necessary condition right uh here uh the what claim number two clouds are a requirement for rain now you need to say why right so what is the why claim so the now here in the why claim you're going to say something like um that if you don't have clouds you can't have rain right so so you explain so you will will explain what a requirement is and how this the nature of clouds um constitute it being a requirement for rain okay so why is it that clouds a requirement for rain um because since oops i'll still leave that now so since rain is a product of clouds Without clouds, there cannot be rain. If water fall from the sky, another reason this is called rain. Rain only comes. From clouds. So clouds, clouds is a requirement for the presence of rain. So that's that would be that this would be uh, sufficient to constitute a defense of that first premise. Uh, if it's raining, it's cloudy. Now, because remember this, if it's raining, it's cloudy. Means it's going to be broken down into two what statements right so you have what statement number one that rain is good enough to guarantee that there are clouds and what statement number two that clouds are required for rain now in the short paper really what you need to do is is um uh uh is give me good reasons why uh, give me good reasons why uh some evidence might be required depending on what you're claiming in the longer paper what uh, I'll be, you, what you'll need to do is both, right? So you have reasons, and then you also have evidence. So the way this defense will work is you have your what claims, and then we'll just use this first one. Uh, what claim, and number one is this, and then, we'll, then after that, you have uh, the Y claims. Now, Y claims are going to be broken down into two parts, right? So the Y claim is going to be the reasons, and the next part is the evidence for the reasons. 
Now, in here, we have rain is going to appear in rain as a product of clouds. So, to give evidence for this, you'd have to probably refer to, uh, you know, empirical research, empirical studies, those types of things would constitute some sort of evidence. But what, when a lot of, for this kind of thing, if you're willing to do a defense, say, of um, the, the statement, if I have my driver's license and I pass written test, uh, then the evidence for your reason that, you know, it's a rule that you have to pass a written test to, it's a requirement to have uh, gotten your driver's license, um, the evidence for that is going to be a reason, was going to be something in the world that's outside of your head, right? Uh, in this case, that is the, the statute, the legal statute that states that, that would be evidence. Um, and so the evidence, so reasons then they work to give um, people um, understanding of why you think that this statement is true. And now a lot of times though, your reasons will require evidence, right? Now that evidence is going to be something that's accessible to everyone. Uh, so it's going to be, oftentimes going to be states of affairs in the world um, that are outside of human uh, minds. Uh, now uh, it can be as things in the human mind as well, um, but those might start constituting more like reasons. Uh, so evidence is good. You have empirical evidence and you also have um, um, other uh, logical evidence and all kinds of mathematical evidence and all kinds of evidence that aren't empirical. So I want you to understand that um, evidence is not the same thing as empirical evidence. Um, there are different kinds of evidence for different types of categories. But um, So the next premise that you'll then want to defend is the second premise. And that second premise is it is raining. So to do that, you paste that in, you put it over in the middle and go ahead and bold it. And then what we'll do is we'll defend it, right? So I'm not, so here when you're defending something like this, like a categorical claim, um, you, you, you know, uh, here you're going to, you know, you could, re you can give, you can, I see it raining. Um, you know, I'm looking at my window and rain is falling from the sky and the clouds up there. Um, you can point to like weather forecasts or weather reports, um, those kinds of things. Now, oftentimes that second premise isn't going to be as easy to defend as it is raining currently, right? Um, that second premise is going to, um, you know, be more complex. But uh, nevertheless, you just have to give people reasons why uh, they should believe that second premise, namely that it's cloudy. And after you do that, now when you defend this um, premise right here, uh, don't do something so quick like this. You know, make, write it in essay format. Uh, you'll need to uh, give me, you know, as if you're you know, writing a paragraph in defense of the fact that it's raining right now. So do your best to formulate it in a way that is clear to read. Um, now, after you've done this, so if you defend that it's, if it's raining, it's cloudy, it's raining, uh, then all you'll need is your conclusion. So go ahead and copy and paste that, put that there, or delete that, and fold it. And then all you need to do is explain that the premises are working, right? So you say, um, I've defended my first premise, um, which um, I've defended my first premise and second premise. And since this is a deductive, it's a valid argument. If my premises are true, conclusion must be true. Number four.
So here you have it. It says, yeah, let's move this over so it's centered. Uh, okay. So here uh, you have the quick defense of, I have, um, since I've defended my prem my first and second premise, and, and since it's a valid argument, if my premises are true, then my conclusion must be true. Uh, therefore, because it's true that if it's raining, uh, then it's cloudy, and it is raining, uh, we can conclude that it must be cloudy, or that it is cloudy as fine as well. So now this is um, how you defend this um, um, these, this kind of conditional argumentation, the modus ponens here. The biggest, uh, the most difficult part to understand is this first part, um, the defense of that conditional statement. So make sure that um, um, that you're clear on how to defend the sufficient condition and how to defend the necessary condition. Um, and then you should be good.